Hello, everyone. Thank you for checking out this episode of Really Dicey. I'm here with Jonathan Nelson, and we're going to talk about his creation, Rise of the Drow, a 540-page monster module. So so tell me, Jonathan, I have players. I'm a big fan of the Underdark, and I'm always looking for more ways of torturing them. What can this book offer me? Uh, if you're looking for ways to torture your players, uh, you've come to the right place. Uh, the Drow are um, very adept at... Uh, finding ways to uh, enslave or torture their uh, their victims. So um, <laughs> there's there's uh, there's lots to do in Rise of the Drow. Um, it's an adventure from levels one through uh, 15. And if you explore a lot of the extra content in the book, uh, it can take you all the way up to level 20. Uh, there, It starts out in the upper world. Uh, some, I'm not gonna give too many spoilers, but there's a lot of uh, drow activity taking place um, in and around the village of Rybalka in the Clavic Kingdom. Uh, which is in our Aventir campaign setting, which uh, is actually free to access all our stuff online at aewgames.com. So anyone that needs that can get it, or you can just transplant it into your own setting, uh, whether you're playing Forgotten Realms or your own camp, you, you know, your own world. And uh, it starts out with the drow kind of coming in and moving in on an important artifact in the area, and then it kind of kind of goes from there. And uh, eventually, the players or the players' characters follow the uh, drow into the underworld and uh and the story starts to unfold and what's cool about it too is you can take it from many angles but yeah there's lots of good there's lots of good stuff in here lots of different puzzles and riddles and uh unique encounters that are not just uh combat related and there's lots of unique ways to overcome those challenges as well i assume that this has tons of new monsters or new magic items and and that and uh similar items similar things like that for this campaign yeah, there's there's a whole underworld uh, bestiary. So at the back of the book, um, you've got all the unique uh, critters and stuff like that in there. Uh, lots of different dwarves and drow and all the kind of stuff you would discover in the underworld. Uh, even uh, Sferf Neblin riding slugs and that sort of things. Uh, uh, new creatures like one that I really like is uh, is a skilled patter, uh, which is kind of like a cross between a, a bullet and like a giant tortoise that the uh, dwarves use to transport goods throughout the underworlds uh, and trading caravans in these giant caves. So uh, yeah, a lot of new creatures, um, some of which might, you know, you might encounter in combat, others that you might encounter uh, and actually utilize uh, in the underworld for their different abilities uh, because traveling in the underworld is not as straightforward as traveling across some grassy plains or through a forest. I mean, you're working in a 3D environment where you're gonna be uh, in some very dangerous situations. So sometimes um, even your own gear won't be enough to overcome um, the geographical terrain challenges and things like that. You might need to get a riding slug and go up the side of the wall, so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know some dungeon masters that I've spoken to that are sometimes are afraid of doing a campaign in the Underdark because uh, they may feel, I don't wanna say overwhelmed, but they may think, they may not, they feel they may not have enough tools to give a, a good campaign. Um, does the book help out in any way with that? Any uh, yeah, master tools? It, it does a lot, actually. Um, as far as like, uh, the cool thing about this book is it's not just an adventure. Um, Joshua Gullion, who is no longer with us, he passed away some years ago, but he was instrumental in this book coming to, to fruition, uh, used to call this book, uh, the, the Rise of the Drow, a, uh, a uh, campaign setting disguised as an adventure in that there's lots and lots of content within the book, uh, lots of unique locations to explore, lots of uh, characters to interact with. And uh, so there's there's no lack of unique things to uh, for the DM to access and unfold. Like in the Dwarven city of Embla, there's dozens and dozens of locations and every single one has information on it. They're all marked on the main map. So you can basically let players go and explore the city at, you know, as they wish. And then when they start to delve into the other uh, caverns of the underworld, um, there are all these unique locations and it kind of ties into our underworld races and classes book in that we've created unique uh, locations throughout the underworld where you might go to the Ahul Moss Gardens and the Ahul are these, uh, are these bat-like humanoids that hang upside down up in the caves and live in these moss, in these moss caves. And, uh, and yeah, there's, a, there's all these different places to explore. As far as like new rules and stuff like that, um, we don't delve a lot into that. This one, I mean, there are new magic items, there's new spells, new monsters, 
uh, lots of new tools that you can use. But as far as rules go, we actually uh, um, only just recently announced it and not even on an official capacity that our next Kickstarter is going to be the Survivalist Guide to Spelunking, which is a uh, kind of like the fifth edition version of the Dungeoneer Survival Guide. And uh, we even got Douglas Niles, the original author of the Dungeoneer Survival Guide, to work on that project with us. So uh, that'll be forthcoming as well. So if people are looking for underworld, uh, massive campaigns in the underworld, we've got underworld races and classes. So you've got all these different races and classes. You've got cult secrets of the underworld, which expands um, some of the unique classes and abilities of those races. Rise of the Drow Collector's Edition, which is almost a 600 page mega adventure and campaign setting. And then we'll also be having the Survivalist Guide to Splunking with um, world, uh, basically rules that help you when you're adventuring in a world which is quite different than the surface world, 3D environments, uh, new rules for holding your breath, uh, especially while fighting, things like that, and uh, momentum engine, foraging engines, all kinds of stuff. So that's forthcoming on the horizon as well. Oh, wow, that's really exciting. Um... Uh, the art. Uh, the art for this book is fantastic. Um, the maps, are, what I've seen so far, is, is incredible. Um, can you tell us about some of the direction you, you wanted for this book and how you chose your artists? Yeah, sure. Um, the maps originally, the preliminary maps I actually drew up years ago because this is a collector's edition that we've completely redone and added on to. But a lot of the maps I actually drew just in a sketchbook myself. Uh, I don't pride myself in being a fantastic artist. Uh, but I've been making maps for my uh, for my own home games since I started DMing when I was eight years old, which is many, many years ago. And uh, so I, I took a lot of my ideas and concepts and then I shared them with at the time uh, when we started AEW Games or AdventureWeek.com uh, in the original days. Uh, I started with Todd Gamble and he was the original cartographer for uh, Dungeons and Dragons 3.5. So like the core rule books and a lot of the big adventures back then, he did all the, a lot of the cartography al along with Rob Lazaretti. So I worked with Todd exclusively on a lot of the maps. This new edition, uh, the maps have all been completely redone from the ground up. Uh, we worked with Tommy Salama. Uh, he's a uh, Finnish uh, award-winning uh, map maker. And uh, honestly, I consider him kind of like, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Jonathan Roberts, but his styles are very similar. And he's kind of, I, I see him as an up and coming Jonathan Roberts. Jonathan Roberts did all like the um, Land of Ice and Fire stuff um, or Song of Ice and Fire, but then, um, Sean McDonald also did a lot, a lot of maps as well. And um, the maps, it is pretty in depth, especially when you get into cities that have, you know, hundreds and hundreds of buildings and then there's specific locations. And we want to make sure that we're marking them correctly on the map so that everything syncs up with, with all of the text as well. So yeah, the direction on a project like this is pretty, it's, it's a pretty massive undertaking. And I won't lie, you know, there definitely there there's slip ups and little some little bugs here and there uh, within the book, but they're uh, I'd say they're pretty minor considering the uh, that the book is nearly 600 pages. So I think we got away pretty good uh, with the uh, at least with the editing and whatnot. So, uh, but yeah, the, the managing a project of this magnitude was was pretty intense, and I can uh, honestly say that we're not going to be doing another book of this size possibly ever again unless i have a pretty <laughs> sizable team to handle it i mean if you want to take a look at it here it's the um it's the soft touch cover so it's really you know really nice feeling cover it's kind of like the um the collector's editions of the uh the new dnd &D books you know how they have the the special collector's edition versions um and then we've got a nice foil um both on the spine and on the cover and uh and then the pages, uh, it's the, the highest quality ink and print. Uh, it is, uh, we use the same printer that uh, Paizo uses. Um, we've also got ribbon bookmarks. We've got metallic end papers. Uh, basically this book, we spared no expense. And the MSRP on this is $129, but uh, you can buy it on aewgames.com for 99 bucks. I think we have like 60 copies left. Um, and then we'll be completely sold out. Uh, the Kickstarter did really well. Pre-order did fantastic, even better than I imagined. And then um, sales have just been off the chart. So it's going really good, and uh, we're really we're really happy with it. We put we put everything into this book because <laughs> it's it a collaborative effort of a lot of people and um, years and years of uh, of work. So yeah. yeah. Now, if, if when the physical copies go away, you still have the PDFs available for people. Correct. We okay. still have PDF. We still have um, we have Fantasy Grounds, which uh, Rob Twee uh, did the conversion on that. 
there is a version forthcoming for Roll20. It's been a little bit slowed down because they had some changes over at Roll20. And so we're just, uh, we have to make sure that we're adhering to uh, any kinds of uh, software. I'm, I'm not sure all the intricacies with it. I have a conversion expert working on that with me. Um, but it's, it is eventually, eventually coming to Roll20. And then, um, and it also, if you do, if you let, let's say you buy the PDF um, off our site or drive through RPG or one of those sites, uh, as we come out with updates, uh, we will upload new versions that will fix any different errors. You'll be, you'll receive the latest version. Um, and then as far as the collector's edition goes, uh, this was a limited edition print run that was specifically for Kickstarter backers. If we do something like a second and third printing down the road, uh, it's not going to be as uh, we're not going to have all the trimmings. It'll probably be a little bit easier on the wallet, but you're not probably not going to have like the foil, uh, the, you know, we might still have the ribbon bookmarks, but you're not going to have, you're definitely not going to have the foil and some of the extras like the metallic end papers and things like that. And the purple head and tail head tail bands. And, you know, this one's like the, uh, this is the, the collector's edition. This is the one that you want on your bookshelf if you're a collector. So. <laughs> oh, okay. I noticed that uh, Ed Greenwood, did the uh, foreword for this book. Um, would you say that his work uh, was a influence on this? And, and was there any other influences involved in making this book? Oh, absolutely. Um, I can't remember who said it. I think it, it might have been one of the Beatles that, you know, that said like, um, the best best work is always, uh, you know, everyone kind of, I, I don't remember the exact quote, but they said, you know, basically everyone steals and borrows a little bit from here and a little bit from there. And I used to, um, used to be a musician, a professional band, and it was like songwriting a lot of times where you get inspired with something you'd hear and it would lead somewhere else. So yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, you know, without Gary Gygax, without Ed Greenwood, without Ari Salvatore, I mean, there's, you know, this book wouldn't be what it is because all of those things that you fall in love with and especially the things that some of the books that we read as kids a lot of the novels uh, a lot of the uh, campaign setting stuff for the forgotten realms men's of brands and all of that um of course that all um is a heavy influence uh but that said you know this is our unique this is a unique take on that this is our own story um and there is a lot more going on behind the scenes in this than uh than just i mean it starts out basically eventually you find out you know it's it's a drow house that has kind of taken control of the city of, of whole lot the city of spiders and has started to reach out like a web into the underworld and then starting to reach into the upper world as well but there's more to it than that and it goes deeper um and there's other entities involved uh there's also um different networks involved you know just like any any drow, the, uh, even those within the drow house taking control, they all have their own kind of agenda and different things going on that, uh, that the characters could get pulled in and possibly even become a part of, depending on what, um, what their motives are. Because, you know, you know, players, they, uh, they could end up, uh, you know, becoming the heroes of the realm or who knows, they may take a darker path. <laughs> it all depends on your play group. <laughs> So before we uh, wrap up and uh, we, you know, ask you about the links and where people can go to to check out more about this, um, sure. what does, why do you think the Underdark and, and the Drow are so fascinating to uh, role players today? You know what I think it is? I think it's that a lot of us, um, everyone's seen, you know, walked by like a cave entrance or seen like an opening in the ground. And I think those of us that kind of crave escape and um, are just kind of caught up in, the, in those terrible dark things and the mysteries of the unknown. I mean, fear in itself is generated because you don't know something. There's something you, you're not familiar with, you're not comfortable with, so you fear it because it is unknown to you. And so the things that are hidden from the light of the day, those things that are live in the depths of the earth and uh those unknown evils there's just something about delving into the unknown and going into a dark cave and all you can see is the the flicker of your torchlight you know as it flickers off the walls and perhaps uh you know the ripples of an underworld lake before you strange sounds of alien creatures off in the you know in the underdark it's uh it's a very you know terrifying scary place and a place of mystery so i think that's that's a big part of the draw on why people want want to adventure into the underworld um and uh many of them unfortunately will leave their will leave their corpses there mm. <laughs> <laughs> i don't know <laughs> so um where can um i know you mentioned it we mentioned this in the beginning but um where can um 
uh, people go to check out more about this book? Yeah, yeah. So you can go to aawgames.com or the, if you want the quick link just to jump to all of the stuff that we produced for the uh, Rise of the Drow Kickstarter and, and the stuff that's left. There's some limited edition print stuff that's almost sold out. Uh, you can go to drow5e.com and, uh, and that includes, uh, we still have a few of the vinyl battle maps that we had printed by Gale Force 9. Um, I think the dice are all gone. We've got some Drow plush dolls left. Uh, the main book, um, we have some pawn sets and uh, I'm trying to remember what else. There's some other different accoutrements to add to your, uh, to your drow campaign, but you can kind of pick and choose uh, and uh, go the digital route or the uh, physical route. You, you know, there's PDF, there's uh, again, Fantasy Grounds and all that sort of stuff. Um, in order to get the Fantasy Grounds version though, you do want to go to fantasygrounds.com. That's exclusive to their site. Okay, excellent. Well, Jonathan, thank you so much. Uh, I love talking about Drow and I'm excited to see more Drow content out there um, for players to check out. And so everyone, uh, thank you for watching. I'll put the links in the description below and um, have a safe day.